Um, can you just put some water in there? Yeah, let's just put some water in It's amazing. There's nothing standard about this place. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Our landlord is really, they're all um, artists. Like a lot of it was built by their kids. They're all just like super hands-on and, and like. DIY. Yeah, so they renovated this attic into be this space and all of them lived there, lived here at one point and then left their mark in some way. Yeah. When you guys first saw it, were you like... Oh, yeah. we were like, we need to move here. This is so yeah. amazing. Is your living room table? Yeah, just our... The room is here, I can't figure two living rooms. Like yeah, we have, that's our reading room, we call it. And then that's our living room. And then that's like a bedroom. Oh in there. In the Hobbit hole? Yeah, and actually, you should check it out. There's there's a really special window in there. So this, this window, we call it the turret room. Their son built it when he was in high school. Well, like, cubby windows, this one too. So cool, right? And you're just in the trees. And it's so fun, you're up here. I mean, there's so many squirrels, so many crows and yeah, everything about it. It's so special. There's even these like little raccoon paw prints because we left this window open before and like a raccoon <laughs> crawled in. <laughs> so great. I mean, it's really yeah. just like a bed. What was this? Like part of an attic? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, this was all part of the attic. Wow. It's yeah. Not, it's got to be a nice experience, right? Sleeping in here? Yeah. Oh, I mean, you feel like you're in a tree house. So our landlord actually built, she planted one aspen tree in like 1983 and there's maybe 20 now and they're all over the neighborhood because of her planting this one tree. And I have to mention the plants. That's all Rosie. She was a florist before. Yeah, our plants are really a big part of our life. Actually, this one is actually blooming right now, which is super rare. It's called a Hoya. We are lucky enough to live in this greenhouse. And the plants do like too well in here, where it kind of stresses me yeah, out. And there's only so many spaces in here for a big plant, so. And then this out here is our, um, call it our landing strip, but this is our like outdoor space. Oh. Little putting green. It's tiny. It's tiny, oh. but we come out here and have our tea or coffee in the morning and then. So, my friends built this bench. We're like, oh, it'd be so nice to have a bench out there. Also to not like fall off the roof entirely. <laughs> yeah. right at the edge. Yeah, I know. We're like between two turrets. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, this is actually still an attic on the other side. This is our attic space. This is our one attic left. And, and this is the room you were just in, right here. It's great, that's the tree house. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And you can see Oakland if you're from up there, probably. Yeah. It's a big area for bread, and sourdough does so well in the Bay Area, and that's because of the, the Bay air. The climate here is so perfect for baking bread, but a lot of people have done, like, sourdough bread, and so Sam was like, why not pizza, too? Here. I see it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's bubbling. It's, yeah, so I fed it I fed it earlier. So right now it's just, like, releasing carbon dioxide, and you can see where I marked it. So when I fed it eight hours ago, that line is where it was. And that's kind of how you can tell when it's ready, yeah. wow. when it like nearly doubles in size and doesn't smell really acidic, then I'm like, yeah, let's use it. But this is all the dough is. It's just, I have water in here, the starter, salt, and more flour. So you get all super bubbly. And then also you see like webs in the dough. That generally means that like the dough structure is really strong. Like that right there, all on the side. Good. It's great. It smells mm -hmm. great. And another way to tell when the starter is right to use is how well it floats. So see how it's floating. When it sinks, that means that it's gone too far and it won't leaven the bread well. And so at this point, what I do is just like kind of mix up the starter. So basically I'm like giving the starter food. And then when it's exposed to the high, high heat, that's when it releases carbon dioxide and just like puffs up. I like to always do this part by hand to kind of get a feel for the dough. And why? What are you feeling for? I just like my own thing. Seeing how like wet it's going to be today. I don't know. Sometimes like the humidity in the air will change it. And sometimes the, I just like this part. It makes you feel a little more connected to it. And basically what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to like 
hydrate all of the dry flour. So you hydrate it and then let it, let it rest. Sam is usually doing this at like 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah, because we make the dough the day of because it's never refrigerated. So now, let it rest. What's like, gonna happen while it rests? You're just like hydrating the gluten. The goal is to build gluten structure and it changes every time because this apartment can be really hot or in the winter it can be really cold. It's so much more work. I mean, oh, yeah. it's worth it though. Yeah, I mean, you, you really have to believe in it. And commercial yeast is a beautiful thing. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. I, I love yeasted breads. But what I feel the most aligned with is the naturally leavened side of it. I always have one just like kind of on backup in case anything happens. Yeah, she probably knows where it is. Starter, frozen on 312 2022. Yeah. <laughs> this is like the most fresh one. I fed this yesterday and it's just in the fridge as backup. And then this one I fed on August 19th. So I'm kind of pushing it to see how far we could go without feeding it in the fridge before it dies. It'll start to smell kind of weird. Or sometimes it'll just stop smelling and then you're like, oh, it's definitely dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Bubble? Yeah, look, little bubble in there. What does that mean? It's alive. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so this is. This is always the slightly challenging part, you know? Yeah, it's just a pretty hydrated dough, so it's generally very sticky and kind of like a little fussy. Maybe scrubbing a baby or... <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. It feels like a baby. So I just add the salt, um, and now I'm gonna mix on low. Start. The whole point of this part is just you're like developing gluten. You're wanting it to have like structure so that when you cut into it, and you look at the side, there's air bubbles and pockets. And you know, like when you cut into a sourdough loaf and you open it up and you see like, you know, kind of crazy bubbles, like small ones, big ones, that's because of this process. You're letting the dough, you know, kind of do the work itself. You know, back in the day, like still honestly in the States, sometimes the mentality of like fast, people would put this dough in a mixer, turn it on high and just mix the crap out of it and then use it right away. But then there's not a window of time for like flavor to develop or for gluten to maybe break down and be easier to digest. So when you're, if you're just like mixing really high and then using it, you're not getting the most out of the wheat. It's starting to look like a dough ball. I was actually watching this thing the other day about the blue zones places where like most people live to be a hundred and one of them was in Sardinia and they talk about sourdough. This, this is the point of like taking the dough and stretching it onto itself. But sourdough is a big part of their diet. The whole thinking of, oh, bread is bad, like simple carbs are bad. It doesn't necessarily apply to sourdough because it just is broken down differently in your body. That one more time. A lot of books. <laughs> Just a lot of books. So now I see how it's not like all spread out. It's like actually a mass. So ideally for the next few hours, I do this every 20 to 30 minutes. In like 30 minutes, it'll spread out and be closer to the side. And then at that point you do it again and you just keep going and going and going. And then pretty soon it's like one like homogenous ball of dough. It's a lot of physical work. Yeah. Oh, it's a ton. Is it off? I mean, can you make a living doing like with that much? Yeah, def and, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Pizza is, it's a really good business model actually, because the ingredients are much less than having like a full blown restaurant. Wow. That's 150 pounds of flour right there. These are the only tomatoes we use. Bianca de Napoli right here in California. The mozzarella we get from Belfiore Just, that's in I West Berkeley. Yeah. So generally at this point, you like cut them into dough balls like that. Yeah. When they come up? Yeah. It's like and one. Why do you pinch it? Just pinch it if it's not fully closed yet. Okay. And then you're just making it, you're just rolling it so that it becomes one dough ball. Not too hard. I think that, and I kind of have this funny theory that it's like, I think this house kind of just, just has energy to it. The whole DIY 
mentality, you know, like all of these crazy nooks and crannies. And I mean, this is unlike anything I had seen before. And it just really like opened my mind to doing something yourself. Okay. The truck. So we got it from this dairy farmer in Petaluma. He had had it for like 20 plus years. It's kind of one of the only vehicles that could carry something so heavy. This big 2000 plus pound oven. Well, I really wanted to like start a pizzeria and it's, it's less of a commitment than like an actual restaurant. It, it also is significantly cheaper than buying like an already built one. So the core of it is refractory cement and then it's insulation blankets. Then there's like chicken wire to hold that on. And then we used fiber cement because fiber cement is like better for crack resistant material. And then the exterior is just like mortar, just rapid set mortar. And then it's sitting on vibration isolators. We upgraded the suspension of the truck and then have it on vibration isolators. So there's like two layers of stability between the road and the concrete. It's fun to ride to drive around in, that's for sure. Ready? Ready. We've done almost a dozen pop-ups at this point. We've been super lucky and have had a really good feedback and turnout. And like, we've sold out every event we've been to. Your pizzas are on this one. Confusing. Should we start now? Should we start early? I feel like it's a pretty common thing to like do a pop-up to like get your product out there. And so this was like a way as the cook be more connected to the oven and understand it a little better. Yes. Oh yeah, let's go. Number 89. How much do people understand naturally leavened? Like, are you getting a lot of questions that people say, well, what, what's Definitely. <laughs> yeah, get a lot of questions. The easiest way to put it is like naturally leavened is the same thing as sourdough. But the reason I like saying naturally leavened instead of sourdough is sourdough sounds like it needs to be sour. And when sourdough is done a specific way, it can be really sour, but there's also a way to not use commercial yeast, but have the dough not be sour. And that is my goal with it, is to have this thing that there's no commercial yeast, it rises on its own, it's just from the bacteria naturally occurring in its environment, it like changes every day, it's super dynamic, but it's not like a sour piece of bread. Happy dough. Happy, happy like, dough. Do you like it so far? Can you tell? Yeah, we, the ones that we baked already were like not too sour, had a nice rise, enough chew. Yeah, they kind of hit all the marks. But you don't know until we, you bake it. Like you can't yeah. tell from this. No. Kind of just by like how it feels when you're rolling it out and stuff. Uh -huh. But yeah, so there's 11 in each tub. 12 tubs. So 135 tubs. Where did you took yeah. all week? This morning. All this morning. Yeah, all this morning. Okay. What's yeah. Up? So you're tired. <laughs> a little tired. Yeah. Just a, just a little bit. But. You really have to believe in it, the naturally leavened side of it, because it's so much extra work. For us, it feels better digesting it. If you feel more in touch with like where you are. It's also more of a challenge. It's like you're already using wood which is a challenge within itself. It's okay, a little, little thicker. Every log that you throw in there is a little different size, has slightly different density, or maybe one is like slightly cured more than the other, so it won't catch as quick. There's so much happening. And so for that to be executed well, and then to also execute well the naturally leavened dough, when those two things like intersect and work, it's just magical. It's so special. And that is kind of the like chase. Mmm, sauce is good today. And it looks good. Is that the idea too? You can see it from the look or is mm -hmm. it taste? Taste mostly, yeah. Tastes very 
fresh, not too acidic. Good dough structure in there. Yeah, happy, happy with that, for sure.